Hello my YouTube friends. Today I want to show you how to create this animated cloud mask for your live streams. It's going to work for you on PC or Mac and we will use nothing but free software to create it. So you know what? Let's get to it. Today's video is sponsored by Placeit. A video about live streaming tools wouldn't be complete without today's sponsor, Envato Placeit. I use Placeit in every live stream for my wait screen, my countdown timer, my branding bumper, as well as my logo and my channel banners, and even some of the overlay assets. They have everything a streamer could need all in one place. Now I created my logo in just a few minutes by choosing from one of the designs and then completely customizing everything from the color graphics and placement to the text and the fonts. And that logo can easily be added to all the videos that you can build and use in all kinds of different content that you might create for YouTube, like live or recorded. I absolutely love Envato Placeit and you will too. Click the link in the description below and check it out for yourself. Supporting the sponsors that support this channel is a great way to help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. First, we need to install a plugin for this to work. StreamFX is totally free. The links are in the description for you to grab it for yourself. Here we are on the StreamFX page and you can scroll down here. There are some instructions and some different things like that. But we're just gonna go up here and get the download. It brings us to this page and we have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. You can see that this has installs for a lot of different systems, including Mac and Windows. We're going to download the Mac package and save the file. It's going to go to our downloads location. We're gonna go ahead and right click on the package and select open. And now we just have to continue and continue and we have to agree to the agreement and install. And it's going to ask us for our password for the computer. So we can just put that in there and install the software and close. And now StreamFX is on our system. It's pretty simple stuff. My goal on this channel is to help people become better live streamers and maybe entertain a little bit in the process. So take a second down below in the comments and let me know how I'm doing. This really does help me to continue to make content that helps you and it's totally free, so thanks. Now we can get right into creating our mask. Here in DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna go ahead and select new project, and we're just gonna name our project, and we'll call this one Dynamic Mask Cloud, and click Create, and then we're gonna go up into File. We're gonna go to our project settings, and we just wanna make sure that it's set to the frame rate for our live stream, whether it's 30 or 60, and that it's 1920 by 1080, or whatever your stream is. Then we're gonna go here into the Edit page. I'm gonna right click on the Media Pool, and select new fusion composition and I'm just gonna change the time for my fusion composition I want this to be one minute so it's not looping all the time annoyingly and click create and you just want to make sure it has the same frame rate as your live stream as well now that we have that we're just gonna click the fusion button go into fusion and you can see we have our media out we're gonna move that over to the right and we're gonna click anywhere so it's free and then we're gonna just drag our background in here and connect it to our media out and you can see it's a black background and I'm gonna add a mask by clicking this button here. And now we're gonna go over here into the mask settings. You wanna make sure your mask is selected and the mask is the rectangle. And I'm gonna adjust the width and the height of my mask. And this is gonna be the area where your camera is gonna be shown. And then I'm just gonna add a soft edge to this. And you can make this as tall or as wide as you want it to be. And just keep in mind you're setting up your camera area right here. So anywhere where the alpha is showing through, obviously your image will be a little bit see-through. So I like to fill that whole box in as black as possible. And now we're gonna go back into edit and we're gonna right click and we're gonna create a new fusion composition once again. You really probably wanna name these camera and clouds. I didn't do that, which makes it a little more difficult later, but now we created it. And now we just have to figure out which one since they're both named exactly the same. And we'll drag this one down in here and hope that that is the new one. And it says Fusion Composition 1, so it should be the new one, whereas the other one is just Fusion Composition. And we're gonna click on Open Fusion Composition. We're gonna move that out here, and we're gonna drag this fast noise in here. And we're gonna connect it to our media out. Now we're gonna play around with our fast noise to get the look we want. We want more detail. We want a little bit more contrast, maybe a little bit of brightness. And we're gonna change this color. Uh, so color one is gonna be set to green, because we're gonna key this out using the green screen and we're gonna click OK and the second color is gonna be black and there we go now we're gonna go back in 
to our name and we're gonna go ahead and scale this up a little bit so it looks kind of like what you see there. Now the seethe rate adjusts how this animates. So if I adjust the seethe rate higher, it'll animate faster. If I adjust the seethe rate down, it'll animate slower. And this is all a matter of what your personal taste is. It's really up to you as to how fast you want your cloud animation to move. Next, I'm gonna add a background in here because we want a standard background of green around the edges of the screen so that it really fades out to a standard green screen. We don't want sharp edges around the edge of our mask. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the color. We're gonna choose that green color again. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy the color we used on the fast noise and I'm just gonna paste it onto the background. And that makes sure that it's the same color. Then I'm gonna take the fast noise and I'm gonna drag it over top of our background. And then I'm just gonna drag this to media out. And there we go, you can see it turns a little darker green. So all the areas of alpha are kind of showing through. And I'm gonna select fast noise and I'm gonna go ahead and select the mask. So now we have a mask there. We have a nice green border and all that stuff. So now we just wanna adjust this mask. We're gonna make it wider and taller. And this needs to be a little bit wider and taller than the box we already created for our camera. And this is gonna create that cloud effect on the edges of our camera. We're gonna add in a really soft edge and we're gonna add in some border width and then we're gonna adjust these widths down quite a bit. And what we're trying to do is make sure that we have a pretty solid green border around the edges. We do wanna have a nice transition without a sharp edge. So that's looking pretty cool right there. We have plenty of green around the edge. That looks kinda of nice, I like that. And if we click play, you can see what this looks like. So now you're gonna have this animated cloud around the edge of our camera, which is gonna be in the front and center. That looks pretty good. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna click on it. And then I'm gonna just drag our camera box up above our cloud box. And there you go. Now you can see the effect that we're gonna get. Our camera's gonna be in that black area and the clouds move around on the edges through the alpha, which gives us that really cool cloud effect. It looks absolutely fantastic. So when I started to move this over to my Mac to transfer it over, I noticed that there was a problem using the green. For whatever reason, Macs recognize the color differently. So the fix to that is to go ahead and right click on the bottom one here and open your Fusion page. And then you just wanna select the background and go ahead and change this color to white and click OK. Then we're gonna go into our fast noise and we're gonna go to color and we're just gonna change that green to white as well. And so now we're all set. This will work just fine in Mac. All we have to do is export it. So we're gonna click the little rocket ship down down in the bottom right hand corner. And then what I'm gonna do is go up here and name our file so we know what it is. Browse to the location where we wanna save our mask. And we'll select MP4 here, that's just fine. And H.264, we wanna make sure it's 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second. We will go ahead and send this to the render queue and then we will render all. And this will take a couple moments to render out. Once it's fully rendered, we're gonna go ahead and open up Shutter Encoder. It is totally free and there's a download link in the description description below. And this is going to enable us to make this a WebM file so it's a much smaller format. All we need to do is go ahead and drag our file in here. We're going to drop this down and select VP9. And that's all we need to do. We can click start and this will just render out in a much smaller format that is easier for OBS to handle. Here in OBS, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and rename our standard file. We're gonna call this NS Cloud. We're going to use some nested scenes here to create this. I'm gonna click the plus and we're gonna go up here and load a media source. And we wanna name these media sources so it doesn't get confusing. So this one is gonna be called Cloud Mask and we'll click OK. And now we're gonna just browse to our Cloud Mask and click Open. We wanna set this up to loop and click OK. And there we go. So now we have our cloud in here. Now we wanna create another nested scene. This one is gonna be NS Camera for our camera. And we're just gonna add our camera in here by going to Video Capture Device. We'll name it Cam, click OK. Drop this down and select the camera source we wanna use and make sure it is the proper size. And there we go. So now we can actually add our cloud mask to our camera. So I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna call this NS Cloud Cam. Then I'm gonna click the plus under sources and I'm gonna add a source mirror. And I'm doing this so that we can use the same camera in multiple sources without actually modifying the camera. So with the source mirror, we're gonna call Cloud Cam and click okay. 
and I'm gonna drop this down and I'm gonna select my source, which is my camera. Now I'm gonna right click on our camera here. We're gonna go into filters and we're gonna click the plus here and we're gonna go to dynamic mask and click okay. And now we need to just drop this down and select our mask source. So we're gonna use cloud mask. And then all we need to do here is go ahead and select the red, green, and blue inputs and put little minuses in them. And so this is removing those exterior ones. Now we just did it for the red channel. And if I move this out of the way, you can see that it has like fringe clouds. And if you do this throughout all the channels, it'll get sharper and sharper. So it really depends on what look you're going for. Um, I'm gonna do it on all three just to show you. So we're gonna do it on the red, green, and blue on the green channel. And there we go, you can see it's even sharper. And now we're gonna do it red, green, and blue on the blue channel. And there we go. So now we have a really sharp cloud. That's what our cloud mask looks like and it's pretty easy to create. It's awesome. Easy, right? If you wanna see how to add epic 3D alerts you can create yourself to your live streams, you should definitely check this video out. Big thanks to Placeit for sponsoring this video. There are links to Placeit and all the other sponsors that support this channel in the description below under sponsors. Supporting the sponsors that help keep the lights on here in the studio is a great way to help me to continue to make content that helps you. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.